Hello everybody and welcome back to the West Coast. So today we're going to be completing the pellet production in Fear Number 10 and of course finishing the harvest as well. We can't exactly finish the pellets without the harvest. So uh, yes, the Combine Harvester is absolutely desperate for a service. The engine keeps stopping every now and then, which is a bit of a pain. So that's going to have to be done as soon as we finish this field. I would do it now, but we're so close to completion, I don't really want to take it out of the field just to do it. Now I did say in the episode just before this that we'd probably bring the toolbox over and repair or service the combine that way, but I don't have it installed. At least I do have it installed, but it isn't actually enabled on this save game. So yeah, we'll just take it over to the workshop later. I have to wait for it just to uh, turn around here. Which hopefully won't take too long. Unless it breaks down. Now we seem to be good. It will just stop randomly at any time. It doesn't give you any warning. Which is, well, what you'd expect from a breakdown, really. So, we're 46% full here. I've just unloaded a full tank load into the trailer. Meaning the trailer is now 45% full. It is basically two loads of this to a trailer. And that is assuming that it is a 16.5 tonne capacity trailer uh, that you can fit two loads in. Otherwise, obviously, it will be dramatically reduced, or if you're using something much bigger, then yeah, you can get quite a bit more in. I think the ideal way of doing this would be obviously to have the cell point incredibly close, just because if you're casting every, well, five minutes, I suppose it would be, it's going to take up quite a bit of time because our best sell point is actually absolutely miles away from here so yeah we probably should actually consider either going closer, going to a closer sell point for a, a worse price or just yeah working directly next to the best one which isn't actually an option since we don't own any fields down near the quality timber area um, that's interesting, biomass heating is actually flashing, I wonder if biomass heating have got a price for the pellets. That that would be something to look at. I think the combine has stopped again. Um, oh wow, the price is absolutely amazing over at Straw and Bales, and that isn't too far from here. I don't think. Let me just see. No, well it is. <laughs> it is, uh, but it's not quite as far as the quality timber. Oh no, the sheep need water. I haven't really been tending to the sheep recently. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll put the conveyor out and get ready for the tractor and trailer. That could just be full actually. Right, there we go, 100% full. There is a bit of space in here. Uh, this combine is actually going to be uh, put away, I think, after this, because the fields aren't quite ready anywhere else, so we'll just give it a break, give it a service and everything. And yeah, that is going to have to be unloaded. So we're unloading directly into the yard. We're not going to be putting this straight to a sell point. The main reason why is because, well, at least it wasn't. The price wasn't very good. I'll check. Just go across. Yep. Pretty bad, really. So there's no point in rushing and selling it if the price is poor. So straight in the hopper it goes. Ready for reloading when the price is good. Ideally when it's a great demand, which actually shouldn't be too much to ask for, since we do skip the night time and the great demands do come along fairly quickly when you are passing time fast. I think this might be the first load into the storage facility. We have sold most of the other crops. Right, I'll just reverse into here. Not a bad turning around area. There we go. Uh, so, yes, providing the combine can actually make it to the end, which it should be able to. I don't know if it actually does break down completely at some point, where it won't ever start again. Uh, but yeah, there isn't much there to do at all. So we'll keep it close. 
Right, the next tractor is obviously the John Deere, just over here. And this, if my mathematics is correct, will bring it to 90% full. And this time, I will try not to get the uh, cab caught on the conveyor belt because I think I've done that before. It might have been off screen yesterday. Um, but yes, <laughs> this uh, tractor isn't the right height. Only, it's just the beacons actually. Only the beacons are stopping it from driving directly underneath. I'm not going to go straight away because I would quite like to be able to use both the trailers so when the other trailer is finished with the carting of the corn, or the wheat um, oh no 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 no, don't do that <laughs> and yeah, don't go over the... oh that is so close oh, okay, it did just about do it um, yes, yeah, so I would like to empty the grain and use that trailer too, he's following me and everything to take it down there because it's such a long way uh, that doing two loads together would be perfect Oh dear, the combine's full once again. So yeah, that's not exactly unexpected since we've got 100% fertilization on here and uh, it's wheat. So you get more, much more off it anyway. Whereas with soybeans, canola, that kind of thing, uh, you don't tend to get that much, even when the yield is very high. Well, I think we'll probably keep going to the top before we do jump into the other tractor. Otherwise, we're going to be forever jumping out of tractors and jumping into others. It'll be like musical chairs. I'm actually using the tractor's tachometer hour meter thing for uh, gauging how long we've actually been renting the uh, Primos 5000 for. And if my calculations are correct, or if, should I say my memory is correct, uh, I think we've had it for 0.4 hours. I think we have. I didn't look exactly when we got it. So it could have been less than three hours on the clock. But I think it was roughly three hours. Anyway, we'll put the conveyor belt out again and we'll unload what we can do. Into there. Okay, and no, go back into that tractor. Where's it gone? There it is. Yes, we should be able to get the rest of this field into this trailer, I would have thought. Yeah, no reason why not. And then we'll do what I said, we'll gun tip it and then fill this up with the pellets as well. And take them both to straw and bales. Okay. We'll continue doing the pellets just while we are doing the combining. There we go, we'll put it here. The combine's on the move again. So we'll just wait for that to finish the field. And then, yeah, it's just going to be a case of filling up the trailer. And hopefully, the price is going to remain good. We are playing at times five, because after all, this is supposed to be the realistic series. We don't want to be uh, playing too fast or too slow. Although, yeah, real time technically it's realistic but after all it is a game so yeah we don't want to be we don't want to be still uh, stuck in winter or stuck in summer for another four months of real time four more months yeah it would be almost spring again uh, I wish I wish it was almost spring again anyway um, the combine's just broken down so that's good I say sarcastically you know what? We'll take over. There is no point at all in using the worker because it's never going to be able to turn around. We need to go back up there, get the piece it's missed, and then pack it up, take it back to the yard, and get it repaired. We'll make sure we finish the pellets first, though, because every single second that we have for the Primos 5000, it is technically costing us money. And a lot of money as well. 
Oh, still a bit here. Okay. So we've got that bit there. And then there's just this tiny bit up here. Get ready to unload. Yeah, so I think next time the priority is going to be to give the sheep water, the cows the total mixed ration, which we should be able to do, I think. Um, I think we've got some straw somewhere, because I did give them some bedding. I think that might have been off screen once, though. But yes, we did have some straw bears for that. Okay, there we go. We'll turn this off, and as soon as it's finished unloading, we'll fold it all up and take it back to the yard. Again, the header, we'll fold that up as well. And then we've just got to squeeze through this gate, which isn't exactly easy. In fact, as the crop is now harvested, we could have brought the trailer back through, which might still be a good idea. Just about. Um, okay, we are through. PTO shaft and it's off right so um, if we can squeeze through that gap there which looks a bit tricky then we can put it in the workshop it was in the workshop anyway so I must have put it in there thinking that we needed to do it but then I just didn't get around to actually servicing it which was a big mistake before that harvest anything else is going to be repaired Okay, the next thing to do is to get the new Holland tractor and to unload. And the Challenger is actually waiting as well to unload as well. So, a lot of waiting going on. It's just amazing how many pellets we get out of this field. Well, in fact, any field. It is going to be quite heavy for this tractor as well, because this trailer is quite big. And we finish off with 32,814 litres of wheat in storage, which is pretty good, especially as we've already sold some. Okay, back to the Challenger. This track should fit perfectly under there. Yeah, very low. We'll get this started up again. So even though it looks like the field is almost finished, it would probably be at least another full load in both of these trailers. Just because, well, going up here once almost fills this thing. Let's just see, we're on 5%, so when we get to the top, um, it would be very interesting to see what we actually are on. I don't think it would be too far off 100%. Uh, it's just astonishing. So if it was, if it was two swaths to each trailer, uh, or thereabouts, although, yeah, it's actually not filling up quite as fast as I thought. Okay, let's say three. Three swaths per trailer, then yes, that would be roughly another full load. Yeah, another full load for both. It's just such an interesting idea, and to be honest, I've never actually heard of it before. I've never heard of a machine that can pick up straw and then convert it, well not convert it, but make pellets in the same, at, at exactly the same time. It's just incredible. I still don't know how it manages to consume so much horsepower though. Obviously there is a lot of workings in there. There are a lot of, of things actually going on inside the machine. Uh, but for actually requiring so much power, I wonder what it is. I suppose, yeah, if you just if you were to write down every single mechanism on a piece of paper and put a horsepower requirement to each thing, 
and then added it all up, it would be extreme. Because it's just things which you don't really think of. Obviously, each hydraulic uh, motor has to be powered. So, obviously, this conveyor here is being powered. And the drum is being powered. Everything inside. There's a big drum in there as well. Got a pickup. Everything just needs powering. So, yeah, when you think about it, a lot of power is needed. Okay, so I was a bit optimistic there. We're only 70% full, we're almost back down the second swath. Uh, but yeah, certainly we're going to have to come back for another load. No doubt about that. Almost full, okay, so the conveyor belt is out again. Ready to unload for the final time. This trailer load. So we shut the Challenger down, make sure it's all isolated and everything. And there we go. Switch that off, switch the engine off. Perfect. Oh, actually, hang on, no, wait. The engine would have to power the conveyor belt. 35% full. That means this trailer is bigger. That is surprising. We have it on the smaller tractor. Well, I think my calculations have gone pear-shaped. Yeah, we can continue. Okay, so when we get back down to the tractor, we will unload the rest, and that really should get the trailer to 100%, if not more. So, um, I don't think there will be enough space in the trailer to actually empty the entire thing, even if it is only 60% full. I think I am a bit... Uh, I'm risking myself here. I keep saying, I think this is going to happen, and every time so far I've been wrong. So, I'm going to shut up. Now I don't think any of the fields are going to be done as pellets, just because we didn't have some bales as well. And of course, yeah, it's very expensive. But I absolutely love the idea. I'd love to do it again at some point. We might do it again. But yeah, it's obviously quite time consuming in these videos. Okay, so it's actually 76% full. We have quite a chunk of the trailer to fill still. Well, look at that. It did all fit. Yeah. My calculations stink. <laughs> really bad. Oh, 98% full. Can you believe it? Oh, well. It's enough because, yeah, the amount we've got left here uh, will fit into one trailer anyway. So, we should have... Uh, we've got 20, 21,000 just short of here. And I think the other trailer has 16,500. So... Yeah, we've got 37 almost thousand litres. Got that set there. And off we go to the bailed cell point of all places. It just is the best place at the moment. I will double check. Uh, if we go across, we've got the straw here. Yep. 1333 three, three at straw and bales. That is so much better than the price we got yesterday. And it's not as far. Perfect. Well, let's just hope the tractor keeps following us and there's no hiccups along the way, like overturning a trailer and losing the load. That would be costly and quite messy. Although, that is a point actually. Yeah, in Farming Simulator, if you flip a trailer over, it doesn't empty. I suppose, I'm not a modder, and modders are very clever people. Um, but I suppose, just saying this, uh, hypothetically, you wouldn't have thought it would be too difficult, really, to do that. Because if you were to tip, in, in, with, using a front loader with the bucket, if you tip that a certain angle, it empties. So if that same idea was put onto a trailer, where it tips a certain amount, at a certain angle, would that not work too? 
could you not get it to unload as well if you flipped it onto its side? I don't know. Clever people among us, the clever modders. How hard would that be? As I very rarely go this way, it would be a wise idea to check them out first, and I think the road's actually going the other way. Yes, going this way would work, but we'd be doing twice the distance that we actually need to do. So I need to find a way of turning around. Okay, so here we are, and this actually is one of two. There are two places called Strong Bales, or possibly even three. Uh, two that I've noticed, and this one is actually really local to the farm, which is very good news. So, yeah, it's designed obviously for bales, but I can only assume it's going to work. All we can do is try it, uh, without crashing into the barn. That was close. Here it goes. I don't think I've ever tipped anything from a trailer into the bale cell point before, but it seems to be taking it. Why shouldn't it though, I suppose? It says it's going to work here. Uh, yeah, that's a good price. We're doing well. The next trailer has got even more in it, so it can only get better. So what did everybody think to this Heron trailer? I really like it. Of course, when the download link is available, I will uh, put the link below. Yeah, so this tractor has decided to stop here. I am fairly sure it's broken down. It did break down a few times on the way down here. Yep, it did. Let's hope we can manage it up to the top. Still going. That's good to see. And then we just reverse into here. Okay, so this should be even better at the same price. Look at that money shoot up. Can you imagine what it would be like with an articulated trailer tipping in here? Would make about 50 or 60,000 in each load. And we're almost back at 100,000 pounds, which is amazing to think because we're usually down at about five. <laughs> we're usually doing really badly. Okay, off we go. Uh, what's going on here? Yeah, so we turn left out of here. Here's field 14, which still hasn't germinated. That is our grass field, at least it's going to be, when the grass is in there. Um, obviously that's our orchard, just beginning with the pumpkin greenhouses, which we might expand later. Because there are different fruit types as well you can choose from. And of course, field number 10, just here. Which we're just finishing off in. So I'll put this trailer about halfway down I should think the two together should be perfect don't crash into the trailer probably my fault I think I've probably set the distance to uh, about 10 it should have been more like 15 20 because when it slams its brakes on, it just skids. <laughs> it goes straight into the back of the vehicle in front. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's going to need to be stopped because it's costing us money now. Um, but we'll be going back to the cell point in a matter of minutes. So only one trailer will actually be going. I should think it with the Heron trailer. Just because the tractor towing it is faster. And, honestly, I prefer it anyway. Is there going to be enough clearance here to put that up? No, there isn't. Okay. Uh, so I think what we'll do is unload coming back down. That would be the wisest idea. We should be able to make it, although it's going to be very close. We can always move forwards though, if it does fill up before we get there. So close to finishing.
Right, the home straight. This is the final piece of the field. 84% full. Uh, actually, oh that's annoying. It's going to unload into the agro line of first. Hmm. Soon sorted that out. Uh, so yes, 92%. We're going to make it. In fact, it's going to be perfect. 96, 97, and there we go. We're unloading. Yeah, so it's just going to be a case now of racing over to the sell point while the price is still good. And then, we'll finish the field. That'll be it done. We've made quite a bit of money in the process. So, yeah, although it did cost us quite a bit of money to lease this thing, you can't say we haven't made a lot of money by using it. Worth every penny, if you ask me. Although, yes, if we were to go over the one hour, uh, it would charge us another £11,500, 11 which it wouldn't uh, obviously make a loss. We'd still make a good profit, but it would, yeah, it would, it would be a good hit in the profit margin. Uh, there we go, right, it's a tiny bit here actually, we'll just go for that. Which I still managed to miss them off, but not to worry. So what can we finish off with? 110,000? Anything over 100,000 is good in my eyes, so yeah, anything. Let's just see what we can make. Bit of fun. Right, I'm going to put a guess on, although this again is very risky, as I'm usually wrong, but I'm going to put a guess on 110. It just seems to be a decent number. We finish off with £110,000. If you're quick, you can have a guess too. Here it goes. Oops. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be close. It's going to be very close. Oh, look at that. If you said 108,000 or thereabouts, well done. Because I got it wrong. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And until next time, I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.